So during the course of this lecture, we'll be dealing with how uh, to evaluate a child with hematuria. And to start with the definition, hematuria obviously is the passage of blood in the urine. Now it can be macroscopic or gross hematuria, which is visible to the naked eye. You can see the red color in the urine or shades of red in the urine. So it can be macroscopic or it can be microscopic. And this is defined as the presence of more than five red cells per hypar field in a centrifuge sample. So macroscopic hematuria can be microscopic or macroscopic. So let's move on to detection of hematuria. Visual examination is extremely important. This is what brings a lot of patients to medical attention. You need to look at the urine and by looking at the urine itself, you can gain a lot of information. So it's very important uh, to, to uh, note, your, note your findings on visual examination. We'll deal with this uh, the details a little later. You can use dip t dipsticks, but remember dipsticks will also show, uh, dipsticks will be positive, will show positivity for hematuria when there is hemoglobinuria, when there is myoglobinuria, and when there, is when there are significant amounts of ascorbic acid in the urine. So there can be false positive uh, 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 results with dipstick uh, for hemoglobin in these, uh, for hematuria rather. Uh, with these uh, uh, with these entities, but it's a very easy method of detecting hematuria. And then obviously you have your microscopy where you formally look at the urine under a microscope. And uh, there are just a few images of uh, hematuria, uh, how what hematuria looks like under the microscope. And uh, we deal with uh, we we uh, clinically uh, uh, talk about dysmorphic red cells. Uh, now dysmorphic red cells are the, the pe presence of dysmorphic red cells indicate uh, uh, th that the indicate that this hematuria is coming from the kidney. So it's a glomerular hematuria, and a glomerular hematuria is uh, defined as hematuria occurring uh, at a level higher than or proximal to the renal papillae or higher than the renal papillae. So these uh, uh, red cells, the red cells that occur due to glomerular causes. Uh, through because of uh, their traverse, uh, because they traverse the various membranes, uh, the, the cells get uh, uh, the become dysmorphic. Uh, however, uh, to definitely say that uh, say that say that they are dysmorphic red cells, there is a significant amount of dysmorphic red cells in the urine. Uh, you, should, you should have very level, high levels, I think, as like say as high as 70, 80 percent of the cells should be dysmorphic to be absolutely certain that this is a glomerular hematuria. And if your dysmorph dysmorphic, cell, uh, dysmorphic cell percentage is less than 20 percent, then that uh, uh, usually excludes a glomerular cause for uh, hematuria. But in between 20 to 70, 80, uh, it can, uh, you know, uh, it can, you know, indicate either. So you, it's it's just a helpful indicator, and it is definitely not a, 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 a conclusive uh, 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 method of evaluating the uh, or conclusive method of differentiating between glomerular and uh, extraglomerular hematuria. But it is helpful. Uh, this is how red cell casts appear in the urine. And uh, this is uh, another second picture shows granular casts. Uh, so these are all visible on urine microscopy. And the presence of red cell casts and granular casts, these do indicate a glomerular cause for the hematuria. So this is very important and it is more conclusive than your dysmorphic red cells if present. What are the other causes of red cells in the urine? Um, there is hemoglobinuria due following hemolysis or intravascular when there is intravascular hemolysis uh, and there is hemoglobin in the urine urine again would appear red or dark red and so this is important and this is not really hematuria the causes are different and they can help with, when there is significant rhabdomyolysis uh, uh, you can have myoglobinuria again leading to red urine uh, certain drugs like rifampicin are notorious to cause uh, a color change in the urine, which can appear as hematuria. Foods like beetroot and some food coloring can make the urine red, and you can falsely think of hematuria. 
and there can be uh, inborn areas of metabolism like porphyria and alkaptonuria uh, that can lead to red colored urine so these are all important uh, to uh, uh, to uh, note and we all know that urate crystals or urates uh, in the newborn parents always come with uh, a nappy pink color residue and this is just urates this is just urates in the urine is not immateria and uh, you, uh, you can reassure them because it's a benign entity. So let's deal with the etiology of uh, hematuria. Firstly, glomerular hematuria. Uh, as I mentioned, it's glomerular hematuria is when the hematuria is due to a glomerular cause somewhere above the renal papillae. Uh, so acute glomerular nephritis, as you all know, acute glomerular nephritis or the nephritic syndrome uh, due to inflammation of the uh, glomeruli causes hematuria but this will be accompanied by hypertension, uh, edema and oliguria as well. Uh, there can be chronic glomerular nephritis, uh, there can be certain inherited nephropathies like Alpert syndrome that usually presents with uh, hematuria and also is associated with deafness and uh, uh, they progress to renal failure. And there is another entity called benign familial hematuria. Uh, which is, uh, uh, well, as the name suggests, it's a benign condition, but you need to observe these patients. They present classically with microscopic hematuria. Uh, the features of glomerular hematuria uh, need you need to you need to keep these in mind. Now, this urine, I said, I mentioned earlier that the color of the urine is extremely important. Glomerular hematuria causes brown or tea colored urine. You do not get the bright red hematuria and just by looking at the urine you can you can suggest that this is probably glomerular in origin. Just through your manuscript through the naked eye examination of urine with the naked eye you can suspect glomerular hematuria because this urine tends to be brown or tea colored. So Remember that the differentiation between glomerular and extraglomerular hematuria is extremely important because there's a completely different set of investigations that needs to be uh, done for each of the two entities. If it's a glomerular cause, your, your investigations are completely different uh, from when, uh, as to when it is uh, an extraglomerular cause. So this is extremely important. And another feature of glomerular proteinuria is that there would be significant proteinuria as well. Like there would be significant proteinuria. There may be significant proteinuria. So if there is significant proteinuria, 2 plus or more proteinuria, uh, with the hematuria, this is not extraglomerular. This is glomerular. So if there is associated with significant proteinuria, think of a glomerular cause. And as I mentioned, dysmorphic cells, uh, dysmorphic urinary RBC, again is a feature of uh, uh, is a feature of glomerular hematuria. But remember, to be absolutely sure that it is glomerular, your dysmorphic uh, cell percentage should be higher than 80 percent. Then only can be absolutely certain that it is glomerular cause. And it, if if the dysmorphic cell percentage is less than 20 percent, then you can. Uh, certainly say that it is an extra glomerular hematuria, not a glomerular hematuria. And these are, I'm just, I've just mentioned these as uh, these features uh, uh, of glomerular hematuria uh, in patients who are presenting with isolated hematuria. But obviously if you have oliguria, if you have edema and you have hi hypertension accompanying the hematuria, oliguria, edema, hypertension accompanying the hematuria, it's obviously going to be a glomerular hematuria and it is not 
uh, an extra glomerular hematuria. So in these circumstances, you don't even have to do your dysmorphic cells because you do not you need to differentiate between glomerular and extra glomerular. It is glomerular. If there is hypertension, it is glomerular. If, it is, if there is significant proteinuria, it is glomerular. If there is oliguria and deranged renal functions, it is glomerular, not extra glomerular. Again, red cell casts, uh, as I mentioned previously as well, again, that would indicate a glomerular hematuria. So, red cell casts, significant proteinuria, T-colored or brown-colored urine, dysmorphic cells more than 80%, and also accompanying deranged renal functions, hypertension, oliguria. All these would indicate uh, a glomerular etiology for hematuria. So continuing with uh, the etiology of hematuria, let's uh, uh, discuss non-glomerular causes of hematuria or extra-glomerular hematuria or lower tract hematuria. Uh, uh, these are all well, used, uh, uh, used uh, uh, for the same entity. Now, urinary tract infections are the commonest cause of non-glomerular hematuria. Uh, these patients present with fever, dysuria, increased frequency and so on, so you need to pick these in the history. Uh, there can be various urinary tract anomalies like a patient with uh, uh, a hydronephrosis due to back pressure and rupture of uh, blood vessels can cause, uh, uh, can cause uh, hematuria. Renal and urinary tract tumors which are not at all common in children but it's a, a common cause of uh, uh, hematuria in adults. Uh, bladder tumors and uh, renal cell carcinoma, they can cause hematuria. Uh, the common entity in pediatric uh, practice is a Worms tumor, uh, which is a tumor of the, uh, of the kidneys that occurs in very small children. These patients can present with a renal mass associated with hematuria. Uh, urinary calculi will obviously cause painful hematuria, uh, and with, you know, you, hope you can get your uh, line to grind radiation and features of ureteric colic but hypercalciuria per se without calculi due to the crystals in the urine uh, can cause uh, hematuria alone so hypercalciuria per se uh, can also cause hematuria trauma is another cause another important uh, cause of hematuria so you always need to look uh, you need to uh, uh, ascertain uh, if there has been uh, a traumatic episode uh, in the region of the kidney or the geo tract. So these are all important to uh, determine in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, history. And uh, certain vascular disorder disorders or vascular abnormalities uh, in of the urinary tract, like uh, uh, hemangiomas uh, in the bladder and uh, in the other in other areas, can cause hematuria and hematological. Uh, disorders, especially the bleeding disorders, again pre can present with hematuria. So all these uh, things can present with extra glomerular or lower tract. So how do you evaluate patients uh, presenting with hematuria? The history, examination and investigations are extremely important and I cannot stress the importance of history more and even in that at even coming to a diagnosis uh, and you can even sometimes come to a diagnosis with the history alone. So you need to differentiate between painless and painful hematuria. Painful hematuria almost always 
means that it is an extraglomerular or lower tract cause. Stones, infection, tumor, they all will present with painful hematuria. Pain less hematuria, on the other hand, uh, is seen with uh, glomerular or upper tract bleeds, uh, but it can also occur with lower tract, uh, lower tract uh, uh, problems as well. Another uh, important aspect that you need to determine in history is whether your hematuria is initial, diffuse or terminal. Now if the hematuria or the blood is seen only at the initial part of the urinary stream, this indicates a urethral problem, a problem with the urethra or the bleeding point is in the urethra. So urethral causes of hematuria cause initial hematuria. Terminal hematuria indicates a bladder pathology. So you can have the initial part of the urine go be not having hematuria and the last bit or the terminal uh, part of the urinary stream uh, has hematuria. Now these, these usually indicate a bladder pathology, either a stone or uh, a cystitis or some other problem with the bladder. A diffuse hematuria where your hematuria is the same from uh, from beginning to end indicates an upper tract bleed but it also can occur with lower tract hematuria uh, when the urine has been has been when the hematuria has been in the blood for a long time you need to determine whether the, the hematuria is intermittent or persistent persistent hematuria can occur with uh, with uh, uh, certain causes of glomerular, uh, glom certain glomerular uh, uh, problems like benign familial hematuria which usually presents with microscopic hematuria. Intermittent proteinuria associated with respiratory infections would indicate an IgA nephropathy. Uh, intermittent proteinuria can also be seen with uh, urinary colics, uh, with, uh, with uh, ureteric colics uh, and uh, Calcula, calculi. So whether the patient, whether t the hematuria is intermittent or uh, persistent, also need needs to be defined. And I mentioned earlier the color of the urine, a very very important aspect. Red colored urine indicates a lower tract bleed. Bright red urine, tea colored or brownish urine or maroon urine indicates an upper tract bleed because these these red cells have traversed the glomeruli and they have. Being, uh, uh, have become dysmorphic and that can, then this leads to uh, the color change in the urine. So what are you going to look for in your history? As I mentioned, fever, dysuria, frequency indicates a urinary tract infection. So you need to, your, the rest of your investigations would be pertaining to a urinary tract infection. If there is a history of skin sepsis or sore throat, think of post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. If the hematuria is associated with an arthropathy or arthritis, and there's also accompanying rash, like uh, a, a malar rash in lupus, or there can be alopecia, uh, an oral ulcers, think of SLE. There can be a vasculitic rash in the in the extensor surfaces in the buttocks. Then think of phenoxyonine purpurea. So these aspects in the history uh, would suggest the diagnosis as well. So that's why the history is so important. Colicky loin pain with loin to groin de de radiation and dysuria. Think of urinary calculi. Uh, if there is bleeding in other places as well, you need to think of a bleeding disorder or thrombocytopenia. And uh, if there is a history of uh, previous heart disease, uh, think of subacute bacterial endocarditis. Or if there is, if there has been, if there is a shunt, you need to think of a shunt nephritis. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, if, if the patient is known to have a shunt, you need to think of a shunt nephritis. Uh, if there is associated deafness and there is a family history of deafness and renal disease, uh, this would indicate Alpert syndrome, which is uh, a familial nephropathy.
so all these aspects need to be looked for in your history family history when you take your family history you need to establish that there has been a chronic has there has been chronic kidney disease this can happen with ig and nephropathy which can be familial or put syndrome and various other entities which can be familial uh, look for a family history of hematuria as well again all put syndrome or benign familial hematuria both can have family history of hematuria but for that matter family history of hematuria might indicate calculus disease or stone disease as well which again tends to run in the families with family history of deafness is extremely important because this would indicate all put syndrome uh, family history of hypertension again might indicate uh, renal disease uh, and uh, conditions like Hopper syndrome and IgA nephropathy. So you need to uh, you need to uh, uh, look into that. And uh, there can be uh, 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 a family history of nephrolithiasis or urolithiasis, uh, which uh, would indicate stone disease. There can be a history of hemoglobinopathies when these patients can present with uh, like uh, uh, sickle cell disease. These patients can present with hematuria as well. And a family history of coagulation disorders would indicate the cause, the obvious cause for Let's move on to examination. Uh, now on examination, if the child is edematous or there is pallor or the patient has rashes or arthropathy, uh, all these would indicate that there is a significant renal involvement and that the hematuria is due to uh, a glomerular problem or a glomerular pathology. If there is uh, Bleeding tendency, Tyler's evidence of bleeding manifestations elsewhere. Uh, the likelihood is that uh, the child, uh, the hematuria is also due to a bleeding tendency. Fever would indicate uh, usually uh, the presence of urinary tract infection, but some of the connective tissue disorders like uh, lupus uh, can present with fever. There's hypertension and heart failure. You need to think about acute glomerular nephritis uh, and again a glomerular cause for the pathology. And if there are balatable renal masses like hydronephrosis, uh, uh, then you need to uh, consider uh, whether this is a PUG obstruction with a hydronephrosis or whether it is a Wilms tumor uh, that has presented with a balatable renal mass. And renal angle tenderness would indicate uh, the presence of uh, pyelonephritis and uh, that being the cause of the hematuria. Uh, so remember edema uh, would indicate uh, a nephritis, would usually indicate a nephritis. Pallor would indicate significant renal involvement. Rash is an arthropathy, a connective tissue disorder like lupus or enoxia like purpura. Uh, Fever, renal angular tenderness, urinary tract infection, palatable masses in hydronephrosis due to a PUG obstruction or a Wilms tumor, uh, and the hypertension and heart failure with acute glomerular nephritis. So these are what you look for uh, when you're examining a patient who presents with hematuria. What are the investigations you would do? So obviously you're going to, you're going to do uh, a UFR to, to uh, confirm uh, the presence of uh, uh, hematuria because we uh, uh, 
did discuss the mimickers of hematuria, so to confirm uh, hematuria, you're going to do uh, urine UFR. And uh, the UFR is extremely, extremely important when uh, uh, investigating for hematuria because it does give uh, a lot of clues as to whether this is an upper tract or a lower tract bleed. So if it is an upper, upper tract bleed, uh, your he the, 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 the hematuria will be associated with red cell casts or granular casts. So that would indicate an upper tract uh, bleed. Uh, if there's proteinuria more than 2 plus, that again would indicate uh, uh, that uh, this is uh, an upper tract or a glomerular cause of hematuria. Uh, the presence of a significant amount of pus cells would indicate uh, uh, pyelonephritis. Again, that is uh, that uh, is helpful. And if your history and examination have not been able to differentiate whether this is uh, an upper tract or a lower tract bleed, or if there is doubt, then you do your dysmorphic uh, red cells. And I have mentioned repeatedly that a dysmorphic red cell percentage of more than 70 to 80% would definitely indicate a glomerular pathology. If it is less than 20%, a glomerular pathology would be unlikely. So if a glomerular cause is likely, uh, then uh, these are the investigations you would do. You do a full blood count to look for other uh, uh, cellular line involvement like uh, thrombocytopenia and uh, leukopenia in lupus, the serum creatinine and serum electrolytes as renal function tests, the albumin and cholesterol to see whether there is a nephrotic, nephritic mis mixed picture uh, or uh, to, uh, to see whether there is a nephrotic, nephritic mixed picture uh, and also it is helpful in uh, uh, a patient with nephritis as well. ASOT and complement C3, C4, ASOT for, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to, find, to, to define the etiology of the acute glomerular nephritis as uh, uh, post streptococcal. Complement C3 and C4 will be, C3 will be low in a post streptococcal, C3 and C4 both may be low in mesangial capillary and glomerular nephritis and lupus. So these are also important if uh, the, the hematuria uh, suggests uh, a, a glomerular. Uh, it suggests that it is due to a glomerular cause. If you're suspecting lupus, you need to do your ANA and double stranded DNA. If you're suspecting IgA nephropathy, you need to do the serum IgA levels, which may be uh, deranged in uh, uh, a minor percentage of patients. And if the patient presents with uh, uh, with a rapidly progressive nephritis associated with hematuria, you need to do your ANCAS and your anti glomerular basement membrane antibody. So you'd see that if uh, the history and examination and basic investigations point to a glomerular cause, these are the things you're going to look for. You're going to look for the etiology for the nephritis or uh, for, for, for basically the etiology for the nephritis. And ultimately, to get a definite, to get a definitive diagnosis, you might need uh, a renal biopsy and uh, this would uh, not be indicated in conditions like post nephritis where everything else uh, which is self-limiting so it's not necessary but in most of the other patients there are other conditions you de would definitely have to do a renal biopsy to come to a definitive diagnosis So what are the investigations you do if it is uh, likely to be a non-glomerular cause or a lower tract uh, cause for the hematuria? So you need to do a, you, you do, you need to do a urine cancer because this is the commonest cause of lower tract bleeding is a urine tract infection like cystitis. An ultrasound scan will be helpful to look for stones, uh, look for calculi, look for other structural abnormalities, look, to look for bladder wall thickening that can occur with, cyst with chronic cystitis. So an ultrasound scan will be helpful here. 
a calcium a urine calcium creatinine ratio uh, if you're suspecting hypercalciuria or urolithiasis a clotting profile if a bleeding diathesis is likely and sickle cell screening because sickle cell anemia can present with hematuria and uh, you might need to do a urological left referral for a cystoscopy if everything points to a low tract bleed but you cannot identify the exact focus for uh, infection so you see once you've established that this is a lower tract bleed the, s the line of investigations that you would pursue would be completely different as uh, uh, to when it is an upper tract So this uh, uh, algorithm just basically summarizes what we've just discussed. So if you have gross hematuria and uh, the likelihood and you see bright red colored urine or pink colored urine with no dysmorphic cells, no gas, minimal proteinuria, that is a lower tract bleed. Look for uh, dysuria, abdominal pain uh, to, uh, uh, to, look to exclude an infection and look for urological causes. Hematuria. So you do an ultra, you do a urine culture, ultrasound scan, calcium creatinine ratio, and sickle cell status. And you might need a urological consultation for cystoscopy. If the hematuria is Coca-Cola colored with significant proteinuria, dysmorphic cells, and cellular gas, that would indicate an upper tract or glomerular bleed, or, and the hematuria would usually be painless. So you need to consider renal disease and look for a nephrological cause and investigate as we have just discussed. So what if your patient has only microscopic hematuria and there is no proteinuria, no hypertension, there's no family history of chronic kidney disease or deafness and there's normal physical examination and your urine culture is negative excluding an infection. So these patients, this hematuria, so isolated microscopic hematuria is not an indication to do a biopsy even if you do not have a diagnosis because uh, isolated microscopic hematuria is not harmful to the kidneys. But you do need to follow these patients up regularly because the isolated microscopic hematuria can change uh, to, uh, uh, and these patients can develop proteinuria hypertension. And at that point, if they do develop proteinuria or hypertension or derangement of renal functions, at that time you need to do a biopsy uh, uh, and uh, uh, Look, look, look for the positive, you look for the definitive cause. So if everything is normal, you check the parents and siblings uh, for the presence of hematuria and if, they has, if there is a positive fam family history and the patient has only microscopic hematuria, you can consider benign familial hematuria, but you need to follow these patients up because you're not doing a biopsy, you don't have a definitive diagnosis, it's just a suspicion. You need to follow them up. Uh, maybe every three to six months with a blood pressure and a, 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 a urine analysis uh, and maybe an annual renal function. But you need to follow them up because the, the picture can change. Uh, if there is no family history of hematuria, you do a calcium creatinine ratio and a renal ultrasound scan. Uh, so if the calcium creatinine ratio is elevated, you need to evaluate for uh, hypercalciuria. And the ultrasound scan if uh, it is abnormal and shows uh, either a structural abnormality or a urological cause uh, for uh, hematuria, you need to investigate on those lines. Uh, if the patient, on the other hand, has microscopic hematuria associated with proteinuria, hypertension, abnormal renal function, a family history of renal disease like IgA nephropathy or uh, chronic kidney disease or Alford syndrome, uh, or if there is a family has a history of deafness and just hippocorpus syndrome, uh, consider a glomerular nephritis or a tubular interstitial nephritis and or consider Alford syndrome. So uh, you need to do a detailed hearing test and investigate for the possible causes of glomerular nephritis including a renal biopsy. So these are basically uh, what you are going to do if the patient has microscopic or mic macroscopic hematuria after uh, you do the basic, uh, take the history examination and investigations.
Uh, so follow-up def definitely depend on the cause. Asymptomatic back microscopic hematuria, as I uh, mentioned, is likely to be benign. You can do an annual review uh, for the development of proteinuria. You may have to do it uh, more, more frequently initially till you get uh, to grips as to how things are changing. Uh, and you need to uh, review with protein uh, looking for proteinuria hypertension and derangement in renal functions. And if any of these uh, that is proteinuria, hypertension, or derangement of renal function does develop, you need to do a renal biopsy. Thank you very much. I will end this lecture here.